I got a viewer request. The problem is, if you were to dig a hole down till you hit the water table and connect this reservoir to another reservoir that is a perfect vacuum, in an ideal situation, when will the water stop flowing from the first reservoir to the second reservoir? Well, the short answer is that as long as the head pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure, the water will continue to flow, albeit slower as you approach the head pressure that is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Let's dive into how I proved this. We will once again be using the Bernoulli equation, which looks at the energy in an ideal system. So the pressure energy plus the potential energy plus the kinetic energy is the Bernoulli equation for a fluid. Because energy is conserved, we can set the Bernoulli equation at two different points equal to one another. I decided to make point one at the water line of the first reservoir and the second point, the inside of the pipe at the second reservoir. So now we need to see what cancels out. First, we have that the potential energy at point one is zero because we'll be defining the height as zero at this point. Next, we have that the kinetic energy is zero because the water line on the first reservoir is always constant and not moving. And we are interested in the point at which the water is stopped flowing at point two in the pipe. And finally, we have a vacuum at point two, so the pressure energy is equal to zero at point two. So we have that when the pressure at point one, which is atmospheric pressure, is equal to the head pressure or potential energy at point two, the water stops flowing. So as long as the atmospheric pressure is greater than the head pressure, water will continue to flow. This of course is an ideal example that does not include friction loss or the difficulty of getting a perfect vacuum, but we can use this as a ballpark estimate. So now let's solve for the velocity at point two given a height difference between the two points of three meters. The potential energy and velocity at point one is zero and the pressure at point two is zero. So all these values can be removed. This leaves us with this equation. Next, we can rearrange the formula to get velocity two by itself. We are left with the square root of two times the pressure at point one minus the density of water times the acceleration due to gravity times the height difference at point two, all divided by the density of water is equal to velocity two. Plugging in the atmospheric pressure in pascals, the density in kilograms per meter cubed, the acceleration due to gravity in meters per second per second, and the height difference in this example of three meters, we get a velocity at point two of 11.99 meters per second. If you wanted to get the flow rate, you could just multiply this times the cross-sectional area of the interior of the pipe. That concludes this video. Hope you have earned a like, share, or subscription. If you enjoyed this video, you may enjoy one of these videos as well. Let me know how I'm doing in the comments down below. Thank you for watching.